here to inform you all about the barriers immigrants face when adjusting to a new home. Christian Morgan Stern once said, home is not where you live, but where they understand you. I can personally let you guys know that leaving a home is very hard, but finding a new one is just as hard. And I say that because I came here to America 10 years ago. And to me, is a home, a home is a place of comfort and a place where I feel like I can be myself and where I'm surrounded with family, friends, and people who love me. For my project, I volunteered at New American African, which is an uh, organization that helps refugees adjust to America. And the director is Honoré Morenzi, and I work with him a lot, and he's just uh, an amazing individual. So last year, while school was in session, towards the end of the year, I tutored the kids that were in middle school, high school, elementary school with their homework, whether it was in English, math, or science. And I was able to work with kids, teens, and adults, the refugees, they, were, they varied in age, and I got to work with all of them. And during the summer when school was out, I tutored in ESL, which is English as a second language. And a lot of them, they didn't have to, but they came just for extra help over the summer. And it's not just the adults, it was also the kids that were behind in school and wanted to catch up during the summer. Throughout this project, I also helped with events. And planning for them was very hard because we have to find a place and we have to get the money and people to allow us to use the space and everything. And here are some pictures. That's at Family Friday Fun Night. And all of this raised awareness about the refugees and how they're having a hard time adjusting and to let people know to help them out. So for my interview for this project, I decided to interview the director of the organization, Renzi. And one of the questions I asked him was if him and the other refugees felt welcome. His response was, welcoming depends on people. When you don't speak the language, it's difficult to say you felt welcome, which is very true. Which leads me into the biggest barriers that immigrants face when coming to the US, which is language. Renzi also said, you can't make real friends without communicating, which is also very true. The refugees that I dealt with, some of them could not speak one word of English, which was very difficult, so I had to find different ways to get information to them by using hand gestures or just some other type of way, pictures. And I realized that some of them could speak English. So I talked to them as in like, why would you not try and talk English? And it was really sad what they said. Some of them are just too shy, and others are too embarrassed because of their accent. A story that leads to another barrier is I had this one gentleman who's a refugee come in and he told me that one time he had a doctor's appointment and he went in but he couldn't get through because the person in the front office couldn't understand him. So he didn't get to go to his doctor's appointment. What he didn't know, and I don't know if you guys know, is that legally the hospital has to have a translator there for him. No matter what language it is, there has to be a translator there. So the fact that he wasn't aware and there were legal issues, he couldn't go to his doctor's appointment. Also, when it comes to legal barriers, laws differ in countries. In the US, laws differ in states. For example, in parts of Africa, if you come to a red light and you see nobody there, you can just go on and proceed. In America, you can't. A red light means stop. <laughs> And another one is in some parts of Africa, if you get pulled over, you take money out to pay the police. If you do that here, that's considered bribery. You can't do that, and they don't understand. So it's just little things like that. And up there is a picture showing the refugees interacting with the police. They were really nice working with them, letting them, letting them know about the laws and just simple stuff that they wouldn't really know because it's completely new to them. Another barrier is housing and jobs, if you can, which leads or connects with the language barrier. If you can't speak the language, it's very tough to find a job. People aren't really 
really going to hire you if you can't communicate with their customers. And if you can't get a job, then you can't afford a house or food for your family. So those tie together. And if you do find a job, oftentimes the immigrants will get paid less or the employers will take advantage of them. Legal issues go into that too. New Jersey State Adv Advisory Committee stated that many new immigrants do not know the rights or often fail to report housing discrimination because they fear retaliation, which is sad. When it comes to refugees, the government provides health services and other benefits like food and rent for a limited time, which helps out, lets them get a little bit settled in. But after that time is up, they have to readjust and take care of themselves, get a job, buy the house, pay for the rent, and oftentimes they will have to pay for the airfare or whatever the government paid to get them here. In New Hampshire, I know it's three months. They have three months to get themselves together and then they're on their own. The last barrier that I want to touch upon is the culture barrier. By this, I mean the immigrants, they want to get into the American culture and kind of fit in, especially the kids. They want to, when they're at school, they don't want to stand out. And it depends on what state they are of how hard it is to fit in. Because, I mean, in New Hampshire, it's not really diverse. <laughs> so I think the state also plays a role in how that works out. And Morenzi also said that because he works with all kinds, like all the refugees that come in, he said that especially the teens have a very hard time adjusting. He said they have a leg here and a leg there. They don't know which to choose. They want to adjust here, but they also want to keep their culture at home. And it's finding that balance of adjusting enough to fit in, but also not letting go of who they are. So to help support immigrants feel more at home and have an easier time adjusting, I think that more groups like New American Africans will help out. I think that if there are more programs like ESL in school, which is English as a second language, most schools have them, some don't, and I think if that was incorporated, then it would let the kids speak the language, catch up, and feel more comfortable. And I think that the government could give a little bit more time with adjusting, give them a little bit longer to adjust, be a little bit more flexible with that. And also, states, I think they need to increase their quota. By that, I mean states have a limit as to how many immigrants they allow into their state. In New Hampshire, it's 1,000 a year, which is high for all the other states in America. But I think if other states kind of hired a little bit increase, it would make things a bit easier. And I know for me as an individual, I would still want to help. So although this senior seminar is coming to an end, I'm still on my Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays after work going to go to the Parish Center and help tutor the kids throughout school. So I will be doing that to help out. And I think that if we all keep in mind that together we will be stronger, that's a step to making them feel more at home and have an easier time adjusting.